it's so sad, but we're now in our last video about coding theory for our series, Math 4220. Uh, this is going to briefly cover section 8.4 from Tom Judson's uh, abstract algebra textbook, for which we want to talk about the decoding process. We've talked about it a little bit. Um, mostly, I want to talk about the correction process. We have talked about how to detect errors, right? Because if a word X is received, then you just have to multiply by H. If this equals zero, this would imply X is inside of the null space of H, which is the code, and therefore, ding, 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 ding. That was supposed to be a lot of check marks. Ding, 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 ding. Then we see that it's a code word. We have the correct we could have the correct message. Well, what if this is not zero, right? That means X is not in the null space. And that means it's not in the code. So we've detected an error. So that's all you have to do to detect errors is you just have to multiply by the matrix H. And if there weren't too many errors, this won't be zero. Uh, I mean, if there's zero errors, then it would be correct. But if you had like one error, two errors, a small number of errors, this process would not, or this product would not be zero. So this number right here is very critical on the uh, decoding process. So in the literature here, we refer to H of X here as the syndrome, the syndrome of H of X. And I don't want you to think of like the Incredibles that I'm syndrome, your nemesis. No, um, this is the idea here is that if there was an error, that means our code word is sick. <laughs> it has a sickness, right? And I don't need the coronavirus necessarily, but it's got some symptom um, and we can use the symptom to try to determine where was the error, right? And so that's why we look at the syndrome, the H of X. The syndrome's got to be much like how it's useful to detect errors. The syndrome can actually be used to correct the error as well. Uh, well how, how does that work? Well, it depends on our, our matrix H right here. So let's see what, what's on the screen that I haven't talked about yet. So we have our linear code C. It's going to be the null space of some matrix H, which was hopefully chosen uh, in a good way. If we take a word X with no errors, then H of X would equal zero. It's in the null space, we're good. If it has an error, okay, that's what we wanna talk about next. So what if there is an error, all right? So imagine the message we received is X. X is what was transmitted. But the original message was supposed to be mu. Mu, you know, Greek letter for M right there, right? So it was supposed to be mu, that was the original message, but some noise got in there. Noise, 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 noise. Makes me think of the Grinch. Um, there's some noise that got into the message there. So you have the original message plus some error. That is what was received with X here. So basically, when we transmitted the message mu, it turned into X, which of course was mu plus something else. That, that's how you want to interpret this thing right here. All right. Well, what happens when we look at the syndrome of this thing? So the receiver doesn't know what the original message was. The receiver doesn't know mu, it only has X. But this is what's really cool here. Actually, it's on the screen, I don't need to write it. If you take H of X, you look at the syndrome of X. Well, X is the original message, which is unknown, plus the error, which is unknown. But because this is matrix multiplication, we can distribute this sum here. We get H of mu plus H of, theta, uh, H of epsilon, excuse me. Now mu, is an actual code word. That was the message we were trying to shoot. And therefore, mu belongs... Oh, it's on the screen. I need to actually read what's on my slides right here. Mu is belonging to the null space. Therefore, when you times H by mu, you're going to get zero. And zero plus the other thing will be the other thing. So this is, this, is, this is the neat observation. The message that we received, when we compute it, it'll have the same syndrome as the error. Basically, the true message is taken away and we have the, the syndrome of the message there. Now, if there was a single error, just a single error, so if you had just one error, that means we changed one of the bits. So our error would look something like, oh, let's say we changed the, the fifth position. So we get zero, 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 one, zero, something like that. We have a five bit message, the fifth one changed. Well, notice this is just E5. This is just E5, uh, and as such, H, H of epsilon would be H of EI, uh, e, H of EI, that's right, which remember is would be the ith column of H. So therefore the syndrome of X, if there was a single error, will just be the ith column of H. So as long as we don't have any repeated columns, then we could actually see exactly where that single error occurred. All right?
And so we'll see an example of how to how to do exactly that in a moment. Um, and I, before I before we go further, though, I want to talk a little bit about what if there's multiple errors because single error is pretty nice. You just look for the column uh, that matches up there. So for multiple errors, the detection process remains the same. Use the syndrome, right? If the syndrome is non-zero, there is an error then we have to decide, can we correct it? So for error correction, we have to solve the linear system associated to this augmented matrix. So you take H augment the syndrome and you solve that. The reason you're doing that is you're trying to figure out what, what linear combination of the columns of H will produce H of X. And the error, because if there's multiple errors, epsilon would look like maybe there's an EI plus an EJ plus like an EK, however many how many there are, we want to figure out which columns of H coincide with the syndrome. So we want to figure out that H of X is equal to a sum of some H E I's where I is in some index set. We want to figure out which combination produces H of X right here. So this, so solving this linear system here, this will express H of X as a linear combination of the columns of H. Since the columns are linearly dependent, there will be multiple solutions. Um, we do expect some dependence relationships on our matrix H. We need some. Now, we assume, of course, that the number of errors is few. So we'll choose the vector in this solution set of minimum weight. So when you compute the solution set to this linear system, choose the vector which has smallest weight uh, because that would then be the most probable error. It's not perfect, but it's the most probable because we're going with the assumption the number of errors is few. Now, on the other hand, the solution set is none other than the coset of C. It's a coset of the null space of H. When I teach linear algebra, I can never tell people that when you solve a linear system, you find this affine set. Uh, it's a particular solution plus the null space. It, that's a coset, right? It, every every solution to a linear system looks like X plus C, where X where C is the is the C is the what's the word I'm looking for? It's the null space, right? And X is just a particular solution, the set the solution that we found. So we have to look for the coset that contains X inside of this thing. And then we choose the word of minimum length. That would then be, uh, that would then correct the code here. And this is what we call coset decoding. All right. I want to show you in practice how this would actually work. So suppose we have the following matrix H. H is going to be a three by six, uh, three by six vector uh, matrix, excuse me. You can see that it's this canonical parity check matrix. Uh, the right-hand side is the identity, and this is our matrix A right here. Some things we can say about efficacy of this matrix. You will notice there are no columns of zero. Scanning, scanning, scanning. Nope, no columns of zeros. Do we have any repeated columns? And the answer is no. There's no repeated columns. So this tells us that this code can correct at least one error, and that's actually the best it's going to be able to do here. We'll see that in just a second. Uh, because, like I said before, if you take the first column, um, let's take then the fourth column and the fifth column. If you add those together, so we take HE1 plus HE4 plus HE6, convince yourselves that's equal to the zero vector. So that gives us, that actually gives us the minimum dependence relationship. So this matrix here would have a D3. So that means we can detect we can detect up to two errors, but we can only correct up to, to one. And I want to show you exactly how that works. So imagine the following th uh, the following four messages are received. So we receive X, which is 001111. We receive Y, which is 111110. We receive Z, which is 010111. And we receive W, which is 111111. Okay. What, how, do we, how do we detect these errors if there are even any? Maybe there's not. Let's calculate each of the syndromes. So we're going to take the matrix H and multiply by each of these words. So if we take H times X, we actually end up with the zero vector. So what that tells us is that since the syndrome is zero, that means that X is in the null space, which is the linear code, and therefore there is no error, and therefore the message is just, the message sent was 001, and 111. So there was no error in there whatsoever, which then we can decode this process. Remember, you erase the last few bits and the original message was 001. That's what the computer wanted to communicate. Uh, there was no error in here whatsoever. What about, what about HY? If you compute HY, the syndrome turns out to be 111, for which when we look at the matrix, where's 111? That was the third column. So this tells us that the error 
the error is in the third position. So looking at our word, we actually need to go correct it. So it should be 110110. That was the original message that was sent. 110110. And so then erasing the last, the last, the, the, the check bits, we stick with the information bits 110. That was the message that we wanted to send. Great. Uh, well, I'll have these erased still. Okay, what about H of Z? Um, if we multiply H by Z, we end up with the syndrome 100. Looking at the matrix above, uh, let's get rid of the previous case there. In this one, we see that 100, zero, zero, that's the fourth column. So it turns out there was an error, and the error actually occurred in one of the check bits. The error wasn't in the original message. The error was in a check bit. So the fourth bit should have been zero right there. So the original message was actually 010011, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one. or we can see that down here as well, 010011. Zero, one, zero, zero, one, one. And so erasing the, the check bits, we're left with the information bit of 010. Zero, one, zero. So, okay, there was an error. The error was actually in the check bits. So it means the original message got through, but we still were able to detect it and go from there. Now, things get a little bit more funky when we look at our last example, H of W here. So the syndrome this time is 110. One, okay, that's not zero. So we've detected an error. Error, error, error. We detected an error. So pay attention to that. We did that for H of Y and H of Z as well. So H, a Z and Y both had errors and a W has as well. But the difference here is when you look at H. It's like 110, no, 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 no. Oh, okay. There are, I, th th there's no column that looks that way. So where did this error come from? There has to be at least two errors. Now, how could this have happened? Hmm. How could you have gotten this? We could take, let's see, we could take the, we could take column three and add to it column six. So you could take column three plus column six. That's a possibility. That would add up to be one, one, zero. But is that the only possibility? Hmm. If we kind of hum and ho about this for a little bit, it could have also been, yikes. If you take, if you take HE1 plus HE2, you'll notice there that gives you one, one, zero. And so it's like, uh, dang it. Uh, that also would be a possibility. And then... If we, as if we were done, right? You could also take these ones right here, HE4 plus HE5. That would also give you 110. So this is sort of the problem here, that our, may, our, our decoding process has detected an error, but we can't conclusively decide which one is it. Was the error in one three one two? Was the error in four five? Or was the error in three six? And that decision would be critical in how we approach this problem. So this is what we do. We've detected an error, but we cannot correct it. Therefore, we will request a retransmission of the original message. And this illustrates the point. This code can detect up to two errors, but it can only correct up to one. So there is this gap where error correction isn't always possible, but error detection can still make up the difference. Isn't that pretty awesome? right? How we are able to detect and correct errors. Um, and then this last one, this one I actually like a lot where we were able to detect the error, but we couldn't correct. It. And that really tells you the difference in terms of these, in terms of these code words here. So that then concludes our discussion of algebraic coding theory for our lecture series. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, by all means, feel free to post them in the comments below. Um, if you feel like you learned something, give it a like. Uh, subscribe to find more updates like this in the future, more videos like this in the future, I should say. And next time, we're going to go back to some more theoretical abstract algebra concepts focusing on the idea of isomorphism. See you then.